Welcome to the first video in this web scraping series, where we will show you everything about web scraping, from how to collect data, how to store it, and even how to avoid getting blocked. So let's start by building out our project by scraping data from chocolate.co.uk. So firstly, we will create a new virtual environment using Python's built-in virtual environment functionality. We will then activate the virtual environment this allows us to use the virtual environment and install dependencies in it. Now we will use pip to install requests and beautiful soup 4. We will then create a file named chocolatescraper.py and import requests and also from the bs4 package import beautiful soup. We we'll then create a list of URLs that we want to scrape from. Right now we will just have one, which is the main chocolate.co.uk website. We will define a list to hold our scrape data. And then we will start creating the scraping function. Let's name it start scrape. Firstly, we want to loop through the list of URLs that we want to scrape. So we'll simply say for URL in list of URLs. And then we will leave some comments here to come back later and fill in where we want to send the request, parse the data from the response, and then add that data to data output. When the script starts, we want to call this function. So in Python, we will say, if name is equal to main, which instructs Python to call the start scrape function when the script is invoked. So we will call the function and then simply print the scrape data. You can see that when I run this script from the terminal, it will print an empty list. So now let's go back and add the request. So to make a request, we can simply say requests.get with the URL and assign it to a variable called response. If the response's status code is 200, it means the request was successful and we want to print the response. As you can see in the terminal, here's the HTML from the response. So to actually manipulate this data and to pull things from it, we can pass the response.content and telling Beautiful Soup that it's HTML we want to parse. If we look at the chocolate.co.uk website, we can see that each product has the CSS class product item. Each product on the page has this CSS class and we can get every product using Beautiful Soup by asking it to select all elements that have this CSS class. To actually get products from this, we can use the selector that Beautiful Soup has called soup.select and we can pass product-item in and take the first element using index zero. As you can see, one product is being printed in the terminal. To get all products, we'll just change the variable name to products and remove the index zero so it returns the full list. By printing len products, we can now see that when I run the script, 24 products are being returned. Just like before, we can check the chocolate.co.uk website and find out that to get the product's name, we can select the element with the CSS class product item meta fields. Likewise, to find the price, we can find the span element with the CSS class price. So now I'm going to change the code and take the first product again by adding the index and renaming the variable. So I'm going to use beautiful soup to select the element. In this case, it's an A element, a link that has the class product item meta title. I'm going to take the first element and then call get text to get the actual text. I can change this again to get the span element with the class price and that will return the actual price of the product. And if I want to remove some of the text that is on the price, for example, removing sale price and then the pound sign to clean it up a bit, I can do that with the replace function. And now you can see the price is being printed. I can change this again to find a div element with the class product item meta and get the link in that element. We'll get the zeroth element 
And finally, we'll get the href, which is the link on that element. As you can see, when I print it, it prints the link to that product. OK, now that we've looked at the selectors, let's go back and clean up some of the data and add it to a dict. So we will get all the products again by using soup.select. And for each product, we will then get the name of that product, just like we did before. Then we will get the price. And then we will replace some data on the price just to clean it up a bit, specifically the word sales price and the pound symbol. And finally, we will get the URL just like we did before. And we will get the link on the URL. And now, once we have the name, price, and URL, we can then append this data to the scrape data list as a dictionary. We will create a URL from the URL we have collected by prepending the website chocolate.co.uk. And now when we run it, you can see that the dictionary is being printed with all of the products that we've just added to it. Next, let's take this data and save it to a CSV file. To do that, we just import the CSV library. And then let's write a function called save to CSV. It takes a data list and a file name. It will get the keys for the header of the CSV file by taking the first element of the list and getting the keys for that dictionary. We will open the file name in write mode, which will create the file if it doesn't exist and allow us to write to it. We will set the new line to nothing. We will then instantiate a dictionary writer, which allows us to write a dictionary to the CSV file. It takes the output file and the keys, which is the header row to the file. We will then call dictwriter.writeheader to write that header row to the file. And then we will call dictwriter.writeRows to write all the other rows to the file. Then in our main function, we will then call save to CSV instead of the print. And we will pass in our scrape data and the name of the file that we want to save. Now when we run the script, you will see that it will create a file called scrapedata.csv and in that file will be all of the products saved in CSV format. Chocolate.co.uk has multiple pages of data, so if we want to get the next page of data, it's pretty straightforward. To find the next page, all we have to do is find a link on the current page that has the rel attribute equal to next. If we found that, i.e. the length is greater than zero, then we will append that link to our list of URLs. This means that in the next iteration, we will then scrape that new page that we just added to the list. As you can see, when we run the script now and we open the CSV file, there's a lot more products because we just scraped more than one page. So that's everything we're going to cover in this part. We hope you have enough of the basics to get up and running with scraping a simple e-commerce site. In part two of this series, we will work on cleaning dirty data and dealing with edge cases. Web data can be messy and unstructured and have a lot of edge cases. So we'll make a robust scraper using a data class and a data pipeline. Make sure to check out that video. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.